Hi, my name is John. And my name is Alice, and you're watching Math Videos for Parents. We help you so you can help your kids with math. So, John, before we dive in, I just need to tell you that, as you can see behind me, it's Christmas time, and I'm wearing my favorite Christmas math shirt, so I am all ready for the season. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about solving proportions. So... The way I was taught it was uh, if we have a fraction uh, and there's an unknown, then I'm going to cross multiply. And so in this case, I'm going to say three times eight. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the numerator here and the denominator here. So that's three times eight, and then that's going to equal and then I'm gonna grab the other numerator and denominator, and that's gonna equal four X. So again, for that one, I grabbed this here. Okay, so now I'm gonna solve. So three times eight is 24, my favorite number, and that equals four X. I need to get X alone, and right now that 4 is kind of ruining things for us, so that's no problem. Since the 4 is being multiplied by the X, to get rid of it, I need to divide both sides by 4. So I'm going to say 24 over 4 equals X. So I'm going to say, okay, X is going to equal 6. Okay, so to me, cross-multiplying seems very straightforward. Um, so, John, could you talk to why uh, using reasoning and solve to solve equations has advantages? Sure. So, um, one of the things we talked about in our Common Core video was the importance of coherence and building a conceptual understanding of problems through the K-12 uh, continuum. And with cross-multiplying, while it is a very efficient strategy that can be used to solve a proportion, what ends up happening is the students move into high school and they get to algebra one and algebra two, where they have to uh, multiply two fractions together with polynomials in them, or perhaps solve an equation with three fractions, the cross multiplying trick falls apart. And a lot of times we find that students misuse cross multiplying in those settings because they don't have an understanding of how to solve equations. So a preferred way to solve a problem like this that also results in the same answer is to either use reasoning or um, solve it as you would any other equation. And by using reasoning, what I mean is when we want to solve something like 3 over 4 equals x over 8, we can sort of interpret it as, as a word problem. Like if I have three cookies for four friends, if I then invited eight friends over, how many cookies would I need? I would need twice as many because I have twice as many friends coming over. So in that sense, we could say X is equal to six, or we can look at it as from the left fraction to the right fraction, I'm doubling on the denominator to preserve equality. I also need to double on the numerator. So three times two would give us our answer there of six. And that again, like, has an underpinning of equality and 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 proportionality that students learn in in upper elementary and in middle school grades. Another way that our middle school students and early high school students would understand how to solve this is through solving equations. We spend a lot of time with students on using inverse operations to solve an equation. So if we treat this not as a proportion per se, but as an equation that just happens to have fractions in it, then when we go to solve it, we ask students, how do I get X by itself? Right now, X is being divided by eight. How do I get the X by itself? And students know they need inverse operations to do that. And the inverse operation of dividing, because a fraction really means dividing, is multiplying. We can multiply both sides of the equation by eight. And that gets the X by itself on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, we just have to perform this calculation, 8 times 3 over 4. And um, we could do it two ways. We could either do 8 times 3, which is uh, 24, and then divide that by 4 to get 6. Or we can see how many times 4 goes into 8 
you know, that's twice. And we could do uh, two times three and get six that way. So a couple of different choices, but using an inverse operation approach also lends itself to consistency and solving equations, which students will do throughout their whole secondary math career. So the nice thing about the inverse operations approach is, like, as you said, it's never going to fail you. I think it can be easy to cross multiply when cross multiplying is actually not appropriate and it's going to give you the wrong answer. Um, this kind of reminds me of um, when you're driving somewhere, if you just memorize, like, you know, go left at the billboard, go right at the traffic light, but you don't actually like have a map in your head, then if something, you, you know, if a street's closed, then, you know, you, you're just totally lost. Um, my husband used to drive us every day to work for a couple months. And, and then one day I had to drive myself and I knew to go right at the billboard. And would you believe they took the billboard down? Oh no. <laughs> so like 20 minutes later, I'm like, I think I'm lost. <laughs> Thank heavens for Google maps. Exactly. So, um, in this case, uh, if I had used reasoning, uh, I would have been able to get there, you know, with no trouble. So I'm very curious to try a problem and, um, you know, this was a very neat and tidy problem because it was just doubling. So maybe we can uh, kick it up a notch. Yeah, sounds great. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this problem and I'm going to do it three different ways. So the first way I could approach it is I could ask myself, okay, I've got two over four here. What do I need to multiply this four by to end up getting a 14? So this one's a little more challenging because it's not a whole number, but if I multiply four by 3.5, I'm gonna get 14. So what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I multiply four by 3.5, I get 14. If I multiply two by 3.5, I get seven. And so that is actually gonna be our answer. Seven is our X, two over four equals seven over 14. Now, that might not be the way you want to approach it, though, because, um, you know, a decimal within a fraction can make people's heads explode. So let's do another way. Let's try doing the inverse operations that John had mentioned, which I think will, will be my favorite approach. So I want to get X alone. Right now it's being divided by 14. So to get rid of that 14, opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to divide, I'm sorry, I'm going to multiply both sides by 14. So now on the left-hand side, I could say, okay, 14, if it helps you to think of it as over one, that's fine. Times two times four equals, and now on the right-hand side, that crosses out nicely by design. And we're left with 14 times two is 28. One times four is four, is x. So we end up getting x equals seven. Now doing that approach, I could have um, taken a little bit of a shortcut, if you will, where I said, okay, um, 14 over one equals two over four. We could have um, reduced right there if we wanted a little bit, we could have said, okay, like that. And then that's going to equal seven times two is 14 over two equals seven. So um, I tend to not take shortcuts like that. For some reason, I just like to work it all out. Um, but that is an option. And then uh, finally, what we could have done, let me get just one more color here. I'll go back to green is taking the problem as it was originally written. I could have said, well, we can actually reduce two over four before we even do anything. Two over four equals one half. So one half equals X over 14. And now we could attack the problem, you know, the three ways we just did. And now it's actually a lot easier to say, oh, I could multiply the top and bottom by seven to get 14 on the bottom as we want. So. That gives me 
7 over 14 equals x over 14. So once again, we get x over 7. And the, the nice way about knowing a few different approaches is, again, you can check your work. Yeah, it's interesting how you're able to use multiple ways to solve this one problem. And I think that's that's an important message. Like there's not one right way to solve any math problem. There's always multiple approaches. And as teachers, we try to ch choose approaches that will carry students through multiple grade levels, not just be a short term fix, like, like cross multiplying. And that's what I think makes math so beautiful. You know, you can approach it a few different ways. And if you use your logic and your reasoning, you get to your destination, just like driving with a little map in your head. You get there, even if a road is closed. <laughs> <laughs> or a billboard's even, gone. <laughs> even if they took a billboard down, exactly. <laughs> well, great. Thank you, John. This was really helpful. Great. Um, we will post this to our, our, our social media websites, and we look forward to bringing you some more math. Please feel free to put your requests in through our, our, our post and our email address on our social media accounts. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.